Hello everyone, I'm Matthew Henderson and I'll be presenting to you on a project management tool called Hack and Plan, where project management meets game design is their slogan and as that may lead you to believe it is a project management tool set that is primarily developed for use by game developers. Now of course that's not all you can use it for but the features and some of the planned features to come are with game developers in the forefront of their minds. Speaking of the features, uh, here's a list of some of the major selling points of Hack and Plan. Uh, the first one, of course, is that it's developed with game design in mind. Um, as a core part of that, they use the Kanban boards. For those of you that may be unfamiliar with the term, it's also called a swim lane. It's basically a set of columns. Usually, usually they are labeled to do, in progress, testing, and complete. At least that's the common ones, but these of course change by team by team. And you can simply put your tasks in one board and move it to the various columns as it progresses through development. It's a common way to track your to-do lists for uh, software development projects. Um, Hacking Plan also has integrated game design documentation. Now this isn't the game design document itself. They've actually got their own view on how to go about this, and I'll explain more about that coming up soon. It has metrics and reporting to allow you to better track your project and see how you're going. It has built-in support for agile or iterative development models. There's been some back and forth with the developers of Hack and Plan at this point, and they have moved more and more towards the agile and scrum model of development. Uh, you can send notifications to various outside programs. You can customize most of Hack and Plan to suit your own needs and preferences. And then it's got the attachments, real-time updates, activity logs that I already mentioned, and it integrates with several other existing project products. And I will be covering many of these features in further depth in the upcoming slides. First off, here's an example on an image of some one of the built-in Kanban boards. Um, these are fully customizable in Hack and Plan, and you can have as many boards as you would like. Every task that you create for development can be assigned to a single board. As you can see, the example here uses the planned in progress testing and complete, like I mentioned before. And you can see a few sample tasks there. Um, this one in the blue column is currently in progress. You can see two more that are planned. And over on the left side, you can see that there are multiple boards here. Um, these are often organized either by your sprint, if you're in a scrum team, or possibly by your specific release, or even some individual contributors may want their own board. Say your management wants a board just to make it more clear what his management tasks are for the upcoming work. Now on to the aforementioned game design documentation. The Integrated Game Design Model, or GDM, is what really sets Hack and Plan apart from other similar products on the market. The idea behind it is that, given the size and complexity of modern video games, standard game design document is incapable of easily and rapidly adapting to the changes that can consistently happen throughout a project's lifespan. In the Game Design Model, you can plan out each level of the design elements in your project by type, and create tasks directly on each one as well that will be placed into your project backlog. It supports attachments and full HTML in the description field so you can put as much detail as you would like here or as your team needs. The game design model is also a key part of the metrics and activity tracking that Hack and Plan provides. As you can see here in the image, any design elements that have work items or tasks already assigned under them will display a percentage of completion as well as task status for that design element. Uh, this can be used very easily to see what is holding up a specific portion of your game design or what parts are nearly ready for release if you have an upcoming demo, for example. Additional metrics are provided by Hack and Plan on the project metrics page, which is accessible by project administrators. The images shown here on this slide come from a sample project metrics page. And it lets you see the completeness of the current board. In this case, the board represented a single sprint in an agile or scrum based project. 
You can further see the hours logged and estimates remaining, number of estimated, pending, and closed tasks, and how these tasks are divided up among various categories of items. Um, one example of this usefulness that has happened to our team in the past was to see when a graphic or a sound artist was overworked compared to the programmers and allow us to better distribute the planned work for the upcoming sprints. Now I've mentioned Agile and Scrum several times, so just a brief overview for those of you that may not be familiar with the terms. Agile development is an overall project development approach that puts the focus on the developers to self-regulate to a greater extent than many other methodologies allow. Um, that's really the key idea of it. I won't go into a deeper discussion on Agile here. It's really out of scope and it would probably take multiple topics of much greater length than this to really get an understanding of what it means to say something is Agile. As for Scrum, the best way to think of it is a framework of Agile or a sub-methodology underneath Agile. It's usually identified by having a project be broken into two to four week sprints. So before each sprint, developers will estimate what they can complete within the next two to four week period. And at the end of it, all of those assigned tasks that the developers selected for that period should be in a state where they can be demoed. Hacking Plan supports Scrum primarily through the creation of sprint-specific boards and making it easy to see the metrics so that it's easier to plan and estimate the workload that you can support or that your team can support for the upcoming sprint. When Hacking Plan was originally designed, they had it focused on individuals or small team usage. The designers were big believers in the Agile method um, so they pulled in many aspects of Agile management into their initial releases of Hack and Plan, but they left much of the Scrum process out since it's designed for probably mid-sized teams, which was a little bit outside of their original scope. However, as Hack and Plan became more and more popular and became used by larger and larger studios, they began adding more options for supporting a full Scrum-based toolset within Hack and Plan itself. Of course, you can use Hack and Plan for Waterfall or any other methodologies as well. It just depends on how much time you're willing to spend setting up the configuration of your project to match the style that you're going to use. Another popular selling point of Hack and Plan is its easily configurable notification system and the other programs that it can integrate with. For notifications, you can configure the UI and email notifications. And you can do this by task or task type or by user groups or individual users. A UI notification in Hack and Plan just shows up as an orange alert icon. And then when you click it, it will bring you to where the notification originated from. Email notifications are just showing you that they can send it to any standard email address as well as giving you a user interface alert. Hack and Plan also integrates with Slack and Discord to help configurable alerts sent to the users. Discord support isn't currently in place, but it's planned first quarter of next year. In addition to Slack and Discord, Hack and Plan also integrates with various source controls, as you can see here. Um, their source control integration results in allowing you to reference tasks in your commit messages, and they will automatically update their status in the Hack and Plan program as well. Google integration comes in the form of Google Calendar. Um, this is mostly for sprint deadlines, milestones. Any date that you have in Hack and Plan can be linked to a Google Calendar in effect. And there are further plans to integrate the Google Suite more into Hack and Plan program as well. Some other features of note here. I've mentioned the attachments before when I was discussing the game design model and how you can fill in the descriptions there. However, you can also add these attachments to any tasks or any notes throughout the entire program. It makes it very easy to pass models, files, notes, whatever you may have amongst your team members. The customization of Hacking Plan is almost from the ground up. You can do just about anything with it. 
However, they do lock these behind, this behind their pricing tiers. So with the free tier, you're kind of limited in what you can customize. And as you get to the more expensive tiers, you can do more and more with the API and with the interface settings. Hack and Plan also offers real-time updates. That's just a way of saying that you don't need a refresh button or to log, log out and back into the program in order to see updates. If one person on your team changes a task status, every other team member's Hack and Plan instance will also refresh itself automatically to show that status change. As far as pricing, they have four tiers. Um, the free tier is really suitable for anyone who just wants to try it out or for small projects without, with limited oversight. Um, the personal tier really starts adding more of the metrics that become available that weren't available in the free tier. Um, all the ones that you've seen in this slide so far were visible from free tier users. The studio tier adds most of the integration features and allows for more notifications to be sent to more team members. Educational is a new tier that they've just come out with this year, and its price will vary based on use, but it's aimed for schools or educational groups. In case any of you may be interested in looking at this beyond the free or personal level, the pricing starts around $5 per month for personal use, or $7 per user per month for studio use. And again, the free use model allows for you to get a good idea of what the program allows and will help you with any personal or small projects that you're working on that don't really require all of the extra metrics and tracking. And here's a list of some similar products that are already on the market today. Jira probably being the largest single program that is used by a lot of software development companies at this stage. Jira kind of is the one that offers all the options, but what they don't have is a personal or free level of usage. So it's really used mostly in corporate environments. Trello is a very lightweight program. It is effectively just the Kanban board that I previously mentioned where you can set up your own uh, lanes and your own tasks. And what it does have is what they call power-ups, where you can add integration for various other things. Maybe your source control, or you want to add the ability to estimate the difficulty of your tasks. All of these things come in the form of power-ups. As a free user, you have limited access to power-ups, and the higher tier you pay Trello, the more power-ups you're allowed to use in your project. Liquid Planner, Open Project, Redmine, these are all project management tool sets very similar to Jira and Hack and Plan. Um, open Project and Redmine in particular are open source, so they are free for a basic tier as well. And if there are many, many, many others there that fulfill the same role. Um, if you're interested, try some of these out or go online and just look for project management tool systems and you'll find lists and lists of these things. And finally, here is the link to the Hack and Plan website itself. And this, these projects listed here are some sample projects that have been posted on the Hack and Plan website by studios that have used Hack and Plan throughout their development process. Um, some of these names may be familiar to many of you, and some may not, but it does go to show that some mid to large size studios are finding success with using the Hack and Plan products. Thank you for your time, and I hope that this has proven useful or at least interesting to everyone.